hello welcome back so we are going to continue with our assignment 14 so in part 1 of this video we used excess rainfall and direct runoff that I'm showing you here to derive a unit hydrograph and the unit hydrograph that we derived which is shown here again in highlighted text is for one hour remember when we did the adjustment factor method we actually had to use the rainfall hydrograph to figure out how long the rainfall lasted and and then know the duration of that unit hydrograph when we use the convolution method and we when we deconvolute it to get the unit hydrograph the duration is dictated by the time step that is used in representing the excess rainfall hydrograph so that's something i want you to remember and we'll talk more about the duration and how to change duration and so on so in this case we had excess rainfall given for every one hour so that's why when we deconvolute the unit hydrograph that we get is one hour unit hydrograph then you may ask what if the rainfall interval was different and we wanted a unit hydrograph of different duration so that's something we are going to talk later for now just remember that when you use the deconvolution method the unit hydrograph that you get corresponds to the time step of the pulse rainfall input okay so that's that so the part two or the second part of this assignment asks you to create a stream flow hydrograph for this rainfall event remember the unit hydrograph that is that we derived is for one hour and the 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 excess rainfall input that we have here is also for one hour so in this case we can use a one hour unit hydrograph because the time interval for the pulse rainfall input is one hour and again as i said earlier if this was of different duration if the time step for the rainfall was different then what do you do and that's something that we will talk later so for now let's move on so we have excess rainfall we have unit hydrograph the question is to find the direct runoff ordinates or the direct runoff hydrograph so to do that you need to know how many ordinates you need to find out so in this case we have three excess rainfall pulses so our m is three our unit hydrograph has six ordinates so our capital u is six and the expression that we have is u equal to n minus m plus 1 so we know what m what u is which is 6 we know what m is which is 3 so our n is going to be u which is 6 plus m which is 3 minus 1 so we so we have to find out q1 q2 q3 up to q8 okay so to do this we will use the convolution equation instead of writing down the equation i will follow the matrix method that i discussed in part one so i'm going to create eight rows corresponding to eight queues so one two three four five six seven eight okay so and then we will have four rows corresponding or not four rows three rows corresponding to m equal to three so i'll just write down q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 q6 q7 q8 and then we have four columns or again not for three columns I'm going back to part one where we had four pulses of rainfall so in this case we have three 
So this will be again P1, U1, P1, U2, P1, U3, P1, U4, P1, U5, P1, U6. In the second column, I will start on second row and instead of P1, this will be P2, U1, P2, U2, P2, U3, P2, U4, P2, U5, P2, U6. I'm stopping at 6 because we have only 6 ordinates for unit hydrograph. In the third column, I will start on third row. So P3, U1, P3, U2, P3, U3, P3, U4, P3, U5, and P3, U6. Okay. So we know all the P's, we know all the U's. So all we have to do is find out the direct runoff. Okay. So, so P1 is 0 0.5. So I will just say 0 0.5. So that's P1. P2 is 1 and P3 is 0 0.25 and we can see what our U's are here so P1 U1 P1 is 0.5 U1 is 10 so this is going to be 5 CFS okay 5.0 P1 U2 so P1 is 0.5 U2 is 100 so oops so P1 U2 is 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 times 100 is 50 P2 is 1 and U1 is 10 so this comes to be 50 plus 10 so this is 60 CFS so P1 U3 P1 is 0 0.5, U3 is 190. So 190 times 0 0.5 is 95. And P2, U2, P2 is 1, U2 is 100. So that's 100. So 100 plus 95. And then P3, U1. P3 is 0. 2.5 and u1 is 10 so that's 2.5 so if you add that you get 197.5 cfs and you can continue and finish this column for direct runoff okay so that's how you can derive a direct runoff hydrograph by using the convolution equation once you know what the unit hydrograph is and the excess rainfall and remember the question asks for total stream flow hydrograph and the base flow is given which is constant of 15 cfs so to get the final answer which is your stream flow again in cfs you will add base flow to the direct runoff so 5 plus 15 is 20 cfs 60 plus 15 is 75 cfs and 197.5 plus 15 is is 212.5 cfs and again you can i'm going to have you fill up these rows I will just highlight those in yellow or I will highlight this in blue so all blue rows I want you to fill them up and remember as I mentioned earlier if you want you can start from q8 equals to p3 times u6 and get q8 but to be consistent we are going to start from top to bottom okay so just to make sure that everyone gets the same answers instead of solving from q8 
solve with q1 so start from top and continue downward okay so this is going to be your final answer this column that i'm highlighting in yellow so this will be your final answer so i did three rows for you and i hope you were able to follow me so continue the same process and fill out the rest of the rows and this is how you can convert excess rainfall into stream flow or direct runoff by using the convolution method of unit hydrograph and to do this you need to know what unit hydrograph is for this particular watershed and in part one of this assignment we also learn how to derive that unit hydrograph if you have some historical stream flow and excess rainfall data so with that i'll stop here and we will continue our unit hydrograph discussion in the next video as always if you have any questions feel free to email me and i will see you soon in my next video thank you and bye